Yeah, what a life. Yeah, I used to live about, oh, around the corner and down the block on 11th with, across the street from what's now Cal Anderson Park. In fact, for a while, the first one that lived me with there is that one there, Linda Comer. I mentioned that because it's Pride Week. And it, it was a great place for Pride Week um, because about 45 minutes after the parade start, I would grab a cup of fresh coffee and I would run through the park before it had the cover on it. And I would hand Cal Anderson a cup of fresh coffee because he was my buddy. Because I used to go do theater. I was a musician. I wrote musical pieces for some theater where his partner was in the cast. And his partner and I also worked in the same restaurant. So, you know. But Cal was a pretty good, a nice guy. And I'm just saying this in homage to the month. And uh, this is the beginning of Pride Week. And next week's the parade. I might even, act, and I won't be here to make it, but y'all should. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to just start blindly reading through this because I haven't been on stage per se in a long time with the exception of uh, an open mic in Everett. I'm actually going to be a feature re reader at Cafe Skippy next month. Yay! On the 15th. On the 15th of July. But anyway, I actually know this by memory, but I don't trust my brain right now. So, I'm going to read it out of the book. That's, yeah. Well, part of it is it was one of my earlier things that I, well, not my earliest, my earliest are all lost. They, they were mostly songs done their guitar. But anyway, this is the title poem, 1224-1978. Uh, Trying to build a paper house in a world full of flames. All consuming darkness, like carbon goes away. Freedom lies in dissolution. Knowledge lies in sin. Madness calls for full commitment. Then construction never ends. Trying to build a paper house in a world a world full of flame. Thank you. You can wait to the end, please. Thank you for clapping there. Yeah. Wait to the end, it's easier for me. Yeah, it is. You don't have to think of stuff. Thinking stuff is weird. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, this one. Oh, this one's sentimental. Now I have to find it. There it is. Well, no, it's way in the back. should be in the front, but it isn't. It's way in the back. Where is it? Uh, three, two, there it is. I have this list of page numbers, right? I should have just printed these out in order, huh? Uh, this one was written on January 11th, 2010, but it was written about 1999, and uh, yeah, our love echoes. Our love is an echo, resounding over the mountain tops, resonating through the peaks and valleys, the cries of ecstasy repeating, then subside to extend the moment. Peak, then trough, peak, then trough, until finally we are allow ourselves the ultimate timeless moment, when the pinnacles of pleasure are reached, when all of our pain and all of our woes are forgotten, our fears confronted and our sins forgiven, and our love shines gloriously in the darkness of night. Isn't that romantic? Yes. Yeah, this one's Christmas time. This is not romantic. This one's from 1981. Yeah. Actually, it is romantic in a perverted sort of way. Depends on how depressed you are. My family knows how depressed it is. <laughs> we all know depression is genetic. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, 925, 1982. It was written for Christmas time of 1981. <clears throat> Silent partners, not speaking, barely thinking, not even listening. Somewhere the amplifier broke down, overloaded, too much current, burnt speaker. Distorted reception, static, clean, must repatch, much repassed, more remorse. Somewhere my heart is breaking down. Withhold the truth, Tom. Don't let on you see it coming. Acceptance is three fourths of reality. Maybe we can talk about it before it's too late. I'm no good. She's no better. Oh, can't she see? I can't see. Acceptance is three-fourths of reality. I write for no one. No escribo para nada. 
I talk for nothing. Distorted reception. I'm not even listening to what I say. Transmitting altered images to distant planets. Images I'm not even receiving in my own mind. Oh, another beautiful one. Yeah, I only write when I'm depressed, all right? Uh, not always. Oh. <laughs> when the mind focuses on the heart's discontent, everything will go wrong. My universe crumbles as I strive for things I know unattainable. But I see what I want to see. True or false, it doesn't really matter. I make my own decisions about when to care, be happy or mad, but my delusions are madness and they protect me, but not from myself. Two, when my eyes focus on my image in the mirror, there is nothing there. Only phantom constructs, and I wonder if I'm dead or undead. But I'm as phony as you are, a fake, a reproduction. The original was lost long years ago. A calamity of time, weathered and worn, beyond recognition. Discarded as useless, a frame empty, and a canvas blurred. Not a pretty picture I'm painting here. I never was an artist. Do I really create my own reality? I don't believe it. I would never create a war in Yugoslavia. Or maybe I would. I'm at war with myself, and I'm fighting a lost cause. I make tactical errors due to lack of intelligence. I never seem to have the correct information. I put pins on a map. The map of my soul. And I decide to explore the far reaches marked unknown, but I will never know. Will I find that place, that secret Eden where the child lives? One who once posed for a portrait, contentment of youth, exuding forth the love of a pure heart, untainted by the civilized world, and unfooled by my delusions? Yeah, I forgot to give you the title of that one. Untitled, undated, and lost to the ignominy of four paper napkins. Ignominity, or ignominy, yeah. <laughs> Ignominity of four paper napkins. And number five. Number five is the beach. Buried in the sand. 9 1 1986. Buried in the sand. Feelings drop like coins, striking, causing little wisps of sand to burst up. Caught in the wind and blown into my eyes, making tears and obscuring my vision, never to find the coins. Number six. Oh. The Prince of Lost Souls Wandering. Oh, 96 in July. Uh, Prince of Lost Souls Wandering in the Darkness. The Void Squandering Life Amid the Earthbound. Taking solace in the abyss, the black expanse seems safe as the womb, but it's cold. Oblivious to the hands reaching down, trying to find a grip, to grasp the lost one, the lonely one. Can he see the hand of love in the empty black space? Can the warmth permeate the numbness? Do feelings exist in the place where white equals black, like the Arctic expanse? The blood still flows in the lost one's veins, icy, thick, and congealed. But still, with a vestige of life, the lonely one bleeds, the red drops look black in the absence of light. Tears and the sweat from the hand merge, mingle, and blend with the sanguine swamp. The lonely heart still beats, coagulated fluids still flow. The final darkness, the emptiness of death escapes him. The calm, quiet, peace of the void denied by the demon living within, pecking at his eyes and his liver daily, pecking at his throat, stifling his voice. As he finally looks up, the eyes of the hand eyes clouded with the tears of dismay, the tears of frustration. The lost one looks, peers at his reflections as of seeing himself for the first time. And he knows he must swim in the blood, the sweat and tears, no longer the mar martyr. He must not drown in the abyss. He reaches up above his head, searching, seeking, groping for something as the lost one coughs, strangling in his own fluids and the fluids of those who would love him. He wonders, fears, and dreads. Has the hand been reaching too long in the abyss? Has the hand grow tired and numb? Struggling, the lost one chokes as he cries out, I love you!
We can't clap? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one, more. There's one more. One more until nine. Now this one, 427, eight, 1986. Oh. This one's the day after they bombed Libya. This is Ronald Reagan bombing Libya. 427, 1986. I woke up this morning. The usual blurry eyed struggle to regain a semblance of consciousness. I walk over to the window and peer out. Things look strangely unfamiliar. Oh, everything's in their usual places. The buildings stand and the cars cruise by. But something is different. Is it? It's the you. Everything is a little grayer than normal. I look to the sky. It's a sunny day. What's going on here, I think to myself. I question myself. Oh, yes, something happened yesterday. I'd sooner forget. I try to daydream of a tropical paradise, but the feeling pervades. Things seem a little darker than usual, as I remember the first time I walked into Seattle. A beautiful little city, friendly with people, with brightness in their eyes. But that was years ago. I left a place called Chicago. That must be what Yahweh had in mind when he created hell. Then I remember the grayness, the all-pervading misery of the urban life. I remember all I've seen. I've seen children get their hearts crushed by mothers who don't care. I've seen junkies, my friends, nodding on the street. I knew one who was only seven years old. I've seen brothers steal from brothers. A mother try to kill her own son. I've seen starving little kids. Little caring is the state. I stood on the highway in the middle of nowhere. My only contact with humans is in dodging a beer can thrown from their moving car. I've seen businessmen make illegal deals and then run for governor. I've seen doctors ruin families sucking blood money like leeches just for saving a life. I've seen preachers and priests sell salvations with lies. I've seen the sky choking birds and people with poisonous fumes. And if I know what money it wanted, we could have closed the utopia. But the power mongers, the big baboons, couldn't feel better than the growling masses. I've watched poor baboons lying on either side of the street, shooting at each other. Why? They were different colors. I see money more important than love, family, or friends. Then I know what happened to the city for 10. The lights in the eyes of Seattle folk have deemed to turn inward. I see people living in fear. They turn to hiding in their TV set. I watch and I blink and I say, is this true? Hypnotic suggestion, be macho and cold, buy Big Mac burgers, the world is sold. Such bunk propaganda, He-Man and War Toys, rock and roll Barbies. Our children are vicious, subconsciously deployed to play Rambo or Nursemaid. Is this real? The bombs are falling already, I started to say. My boss says it won't affect us, it'll be a small war. And I don't believe it. And okay, I remember the grayness, the color of dead souls, including my own. Overwhelmed by the hatred, overwhelmed by the lies, overwhelmed by the blindness, and then I realized, to my dismay, it's too late. There's nowhere to run, I think to myself. Then I know to get away, get somewhere away from here, fascist America. I must leave, even though eventually my heritage will catch up to me. Goodbye, cruel world, as I look around, and I think to myself as I read the newspaper, serves us fucking right. <laughs> Wrap it up. There's an after party. If you know where I live, if you don't, ask me or Joe or Grace knows. Do you know the address? But ask me and Joe. She, we both know the address. Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Honey. It's been about 30 years. Yeah, no that's it. I saw you at Fred Myers once. On the close this line. And I'm going to start out with Grace Dagger. Yay! Come here, Grace! Come here! Come out from behind the camera. Come out from behind the camera. Huh? Oh, hi. Yeah, hi. She did the cover. The front cover. And the back cover. 
And these two pieces right here are hers. Show them your pieces. Oh. <laughs> Two pieces in the center there are mine, and uh, oh. the one I just finished yesterday. So oh, wow! Good. Yeah, nice pieces. Thank you. you. Sure, are you done? I'm done. Okay. Uh, are you done? Uh, uh, no, I'm not done. Oh, good. Yes. All right. Yes. Yes. Well, okay. Yes. And the next person is uh, Mr. Jeff Mahayo, who oh. does the end piece. Come here, Jeff. Come here, Jeff. <laughs> out of a sketchbook, if I recall. Yeah. It was one of your mini books. Oh, it was a mini book, yeah. So I used to like go late night down to Kinko's oh, on the yeah. app and make mini zines. Yeah. yeah. This, these were one of the illustrations I put in the zines. Now, you must have got a copy of it because you remembered it out of the blue. Well, it was the, book, the cover of the book was blue. It was about this big. The blue book? Blue paper? Yeah. Blue paper. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah. So then uh, you got a hold of me, and I found the original drawing, and I rescanned it and cleaned it up. Uh, yep, and, he's, and it was perfect for the end uh, at last poem. So there it is. There it is. And I'm proud to have his work in my uh, book. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. How long have we been together? 91. 91. We just got to town then. I, I came back from work school and pretty much landed on Capitol Hill and made yeah, it within a few weeks. And oh, yeah, he, he did. He did backgrounds for like five of my big, big multimedia productions. He, he gave them depth and quality that was lacking prior to that. We did special effects and lighting and I went to all the rehearsals and worked. Yeah, one of the few people went to every rehearsal. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I have all the scripts. You still have the background, work And I have all the backgrounds. All the backgrounds. Uh, well, you rescued them. Yeah, rescued them. Yeah, they, yeah. they should be in a museum, huh? Yeah. Something. Yeah. Something. I hired my basement in, that, in the rafters. But oh, okay. Well, they're safe. Yeah, they are. Yeah, all right. All right. Thank you. All right. And I did these two pieces over here, which is my new crinkle painting stuff, where during COVID I was experimenting with sort of recycled materials. Uh, and the process is one where I tone the canvas, and then I wrinkle the hell out of it into a ball, and then hit it with some spray paint, and then stretch them again, and then do the little rework on top. Wow. Oh, yeah. So they're way faster than doing them. Yeah. Very, uh, I do a different body of work that people know me for in town, but um, way more rendered and illustrative. Uh, this is more abstract, clearly. So. What's your website? Mahalio.com. M-O-H-A-L-O-I-O. Yeah, he does some amazing surreal work. Yes, he does. He's amazing. He's a genius of our time. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple pieces in the back, little prints uh, of uh, some of my surreal stuff. So they're about that big. <laughs> Thanks. If you didn't know. Right. All right. That's it. Appreciate it. Last but certainly not least is the oldest friend I have in the city of Seattle. Her name is Lori Reagan Anderson. She's a crazy lady, and I love her. <laughs> She did those for there, and she did the bio photo. It was actually a photo from Steven Spanger, and if anyone knows what happened to Steven Spanger, please tell me. I haven't seen him or heard from him since last year, which is depressing thought. Anyway, there it is. There's a, a wooden burn. How do you call it? What do you call it? Etching? Etching? Yeah, yeah. what burnt a burn. That's why it's black. It's burnt. Yeah, yeah burnt yeah. etching of the same the same photo. Uh, the original photo was from Spanger. Lori sketched it. And it's a beautiful piece. And I'm really proud to have that. Uh, I'm really proud of you're in my work too. Yeah, I love you. Yay! <laughs> anyway, I, I, I'm lucky. You got any stories to tell? Those are watercolors. Those yeah. are People keep saying it's oil or something, or they don't believe me, but it's all watercolor. Those, those four are mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, and with, yeah, when I finish the painting, I don't have to put glass on it because I just take like these big globs of beeswax and smear it all over the painting, and it makes it like completely waterproof. Like you can dump coffee on it, and it doesn't, like, it's like. It's indestructible. Oh, I reckon yeah, right. anybody yeah. that does watercolors, no. no. anybody yeah. that does watercolors, ask me. I'll get write down the name of this stuff. I, it's fabulous. Wow. It's mostly beeswax, but it also has some paraffin in it, so it's like a really strong 
art medium. It's called Door Lens, I believe. Door Lens. It's in, you get a little jar of it, like 10 bucks, and it lasts for months and months. And then you don't, it's like these paintings, all of them are like light as a feather. You can just hang them up with a push pin. People love that because there's, it's just so low hassle, right? Fire genius and she underprices herself. Yep, I noticed that. Yeah, so well, grab them while you can. I just give my paintings away to everybody and I just I price them as low as I can because then I just want more people to get them. Yeah. Well, that's sweet. Yeah. yeah. You're sweet. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see. Yeah. Are we ready for some crazy? Yeah. 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 Let's yeah. All right. Well, this one, 12, 14, 2019. It's just, uh, yeah, just at the beginning, but we didn't know it yet. And this was called Splash. The door in front says, welcome. It's a jar, so I might enter in. Hopes of avoiding cold shivers just behind another door appears. Covered with drips and splashes and brightly, brightly colored paints, boldly forms expressions. The absurdity of life. Looking forward to the joy of bounding through the portal, Peace of mysterious delight. Secure that I may enter, the door is tightly barred. Looking through the keyhole, wild streaks of vivid color. Enticed, I grab the handle. The door remains locked to me. The intimate outsider. Finally, I look around me. Our worn and stiff brushes discarded. Dry paint palettes no longer useful. Squeezed out tip tubes lie scattered. Torn canvases surround me. Rejected, dejected, and unused and empty, I back out into the lonely cold. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a self pity poem. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. I just give it a minute. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. This one's going to be weird. 10, 18, 1987. Some of you actually know Belladonna. That's the name of the poem, Belladonna. I wake up in the morning. I stagger to the bathroom. Last night, stale beer and cigarettes linger in my mouth and in my mind. My only thought is a toothbrush until I see the reflection in the mirror. I avert my eyes, unable to face myself. I wake up one morning, turn to you, last night's wine and cannabis coursing in our veins. I avert my eyes, unable to face myself, and I cry alone. I hear you say, why don't you just admit you love me? An echo of my mind's thoughts. Lying sublimated deep in the recesses of my fear of solitude, I turn around and walk away. You can't escape yourself, I realize as I guzzle yet more booze. My heart is a disaster area as I see the wine glass in your hand. The things we do in the name of art. Internal screams. I become aware and speak aloud to nobody in particular. I hate poets! <laughs> and people laugh, not knowing how serious I am, how pathetic I am. You are. We are. Bring another round, coos, from your lips, and cool effervescence pours past mine. Laughter bursts out when I realize that you can't escape yourself. We laugh together knowingly, the mirror behind the bar is light glaring. I see your reflection sitting next to mine. I avert my eyes, unable to distinguish the four images, spinning and spinning and spinning in my consciousness, or my semblance of consciousness to be more concise. And I make a decision. I am so afraid, I hear you say. I must be talking to myself again. I must be talking in my sleep again, conversing with a wall of empty liquor bottles that cost a pretty penny. Reflections in the window, reflections off the beer glass, reflections off your eyes. The pennies fall from my eyes and I know that I am free, but I'm falling. Like pennies from heaven, hitting the ground, I realize I'd rather be drinking belladonna. <laughs> <sighs> Some of you knew her. She's dead. She OD'd on my birthday in 2002. Ooh, this 
sitting in the wrong place. <laughs> but that's a different photo. This one is 921 1999. I wrote it in Rockford, Illinois, which is a shitty little town. Rockford, Illinois, to be precise. Well, the name of the song, uh, the poem is River. <clears throat> water. Anybody's water, I don't care. Who part of the book? River? Water. River, water. <laughs> Thank you. Should have been. I should have brought it with me. Lack of foresight, folks. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> river. The first summer rain falls, washing the dirt and dust out of the air and onto the ground and into the gutter. The river overflows, the, the gram of this midwestern town pours into the current and rages above the bank. An industrial town, devoid of the glimmer and glamour of a larger city, the dark sky reflects the grayness of the people as the river reflects the gray concrete buildings. It isn't all bad. It isn't just a place to build missile guidance systems or fire planes. The river still flows to the sea. It still has beauty despite all odds. The people still flow through the river of time and they reflect their surroundings. Even the gray buildings are a chorus of light as nighttime reflections dance on the surface of the rushing river. Even the people are a chorus of song as they dance on the surface with rushing pleasures. The darkness of night serves its purpose and there is hope. Hope for the future, hope for mankind, hope for the crippled and hope for the blind, soul in the wicked, light in the mind, humanity pulses to some mysterious rhyme. And I watch, hoping to catch a glimmer, a faint spark of flame, a ray of rod sunlight amid the insane, and I lost sad people, of which I am one. <sighs> Yeah, I didn't like being in Rockford. There. Going there was an error, except if, if I hadn't gone there, I wouldn't have met her. So it wasn't an error. It wasn't an error. No, it wasn't an error. Just a long trod. <laughs> um, well, this is it. Oh, I put this one on here? No, that's not the one I put on there. This is the one I put on there. Ah. Um, 010310, January. Golden ring. The wheel of life spins round, revolving so quickly, sight off in a blur, unable to see what's in front of me or where I'm going, unknown. Occasion has it, I think, I see clearly. I know who I am. I know who loves me. Round and round my blood flows, pulsing through my heart. I know who you are and I know who loves me. The carousel spins. I've ridden all the ponies. I find the one that best suits me and I hold on as I reach. I grab the golden ring, not impure grass, brass, but noble gold. Listening in the night, the light to shine a light into my soul. I finally grasp the ring, thinking now my life is complete, my heart fulfilled, my spirit contented. Until I find to my grand dismay that the ring of gold is painted clay, dissolving into powder at my touch, like shards of pottery from an ancient dig. Once bright and wondrous, now faded to obscurity and lost to the sands of time. What number was that? That was four. Uh, here we go. We're at number five. There we are. Don't mind me, I should have printed these out, you know. <laughs> here we are. Oh, tornado. Uh, this was uh, 925, 2014. Actually, some of my poems I don't even give a title, I just give a date, but you've been hearing the titles of most of them. I dance in the eye of a tornado. It doesn't get any higher than this. Undue pressure, breath sucked out. It doesn't get any lower than this. I hear the howling of poets repeating the same verse over and over and over as if I'm unable to do otherwise, unable to contain the howling wind of their continuous voices, each a different refrain, a cacophony of words, all fraught with deep meaning. I dance to this sound, mesmerized. Swirling around me, I see pages torn from books and shredded by the relentless wind, never to be seen, only to be rumored to have been, and gone. As I dance, I reach out, grasping at shards before they had sucked, 
into the stratosphere, up and beyond, ultimately into outer space. Detritus in the space-time continuum. Maybe to strike some wayward future pioneer wandering aimlessly through piles of broken words and shattered dreams of fame and fortune. Searching for a glimpse of an unknown master swirling about the storm. With the sands of time ripping at his flesh, I twitch to the beat. The wind pounding a conga up carelessly on the balcony after a neighborhood serenade. Lifted to the sky, it resonates, a danceable beat. Boom, 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 boom. Counterpoints and rhythms, multiple boom, boom, booms. Blasting my ears with decibel shock. The wind howls. And the voices shout over and over and over, only sometimes in tune. As I spin into the beat of the wild wind spun, I find partners in paintings, in photos, and randomized rhymes. Symbols so meaningless except in my mind or in other searching chaos a sublime glimpse of divine. Spiral tornado vacuums, up goes the house. It falls on no witches speaking poetic spells. Sirens scream in the background. Dark drunk basements of the past. Now exposed to the light, revealing others here with me, spinning and twirling. There are no ruby slippers. Here's the last one. Ooh, this is the last, last one. Do I want to read anything else first? Anything yeah. not in the clock, in the book? I have a little minute. I have a minute, right? Should I yeah. read something? Yeah. What should I read? Nothing good. Anything you want. Anything I wrote. Anything They're all good. Yeah, I have to go over here. <laughs> <laughs> What's 57? I'm going to... 57. What's that one? Oh, I'll just read this one. 11-19-1986, rumble, 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 the rolling of the waves. I hear the sirens calling, getting near the edge. The waves lamp at my feet, so strong I can't ignore. I can't go back, I don't want to go back. You won't see me there once more. I feel the current pulling. I have to go tonight to the horrors of the darkness, the murky waters deep. I have to see the devil sitting on his black and putrid seat. I can't go back. Don't have the strength to go back. You've seen me here once more. Oh, here's the last one. This is the end of the book. Oh. Is that a spoiler alert? Yeah. <laughs> a spider web? No. Uh, 1977. It's titled Humankind. Will the wisp of the night she descends from a star. She says to me, turns and says, you are to go far. I just wonder why. So she says to me, make a wish, it will be. I say, well, I really don't know, but I wish you would go. She just turns and sighs. Thank you for coming. <laughs> You're all invited to Try to give Steve his space back. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Grace Baker. Thank you all.